Happy New Year and big welcome to our worship service this first Sunday of 2021. Let us rejoice and be glad in our Lord. Just as the Magi traveled an unknown and at times dangerous journey as they followed the star to find the promised Messiah, so we too come this day having traveled an unfamiliar journey these last several months. Let us now join in a time of worship on this Epiphany Sunday as we continue to follow the light of Christ in this time and place. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. A writer begins writing a book with the expectation of a good ending. This ending usually is uncertain. Because there are many chapters to write, many words to say, and many opinions to give. However, the only way to know the final results of these writing is by writing it first. So this needs to be with confidence, with sincerity, and personal truth. Understanding that the readers will like or dislike a writing, depending on their own expectations. So we are all called to write our own book of life. Some of us decide to live our lives close to God and to be guided by God's grace in every single decision. Others believe 
that this is their life. And they are the ones who make all decisions and the ones who build their destiny. A new year is a time of resolutions. A time in which many people begin writing a new chapter in their lives. We don't know what a new chapter will bring to our lives or how it will end. But what we know is that God will be with us in every single written word of the chapter. How are you planning to write this new chapter in your life? Is God part of your book of life this 2021? Many people would say, but what is new in this new year if we are still under COVID? Is there any difference between the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021? With faith, others are expecting a better year. And they have a positive attitude towards this new beginning. For us Christians, there is no better time to begin a new chapter in our lives more than the season of Epiphany. The term Epiphany means to show it means to make known. It even means to reveal. And if we go a little bit of the history in the Western churches, Epiphany remembers the coming of the wise men bringing gifts to visit the Christ child. Who by so doing reveal Jesus to the world as Lord and King. So in our case, as part of the Protestant tradition, the season of Epiphany extends from January 6 until Ash Wednesday, which begins the season of Lent, leading to the season of Easter. So even though we are not yet in the season of Epiphany, we are expecting it soon. So reveal is the main word for this season of Epiphany. During this sermon series called Revealing a New Chapter, I would like to invite you to two main things. First, to reveal our intention of experiencing new things in this new year. And second, to reveal our desire to remember the past, but be hopeful in the new present and future. But you can tell me, okay, Pastor Miguel, I got it. But what is the difference from any human being who begins a new year? These statements seem to be universal and secular for anyone who is starting a new chapter in their life. So what is, is the difference between beginning a year for a Christian and someone who is not. You are right. There is no difference in these two statements with the issues that someone who is not even a Christian would do. But what about if I tell you what this means for us? It means to be always open to new opportunities. It means to be aware of the Lord's presence in everything you will do and experience. And it also means to always keep pressing on your faith in Christ until we'll be able to reveal ourselves as indeed children of God. Understanding that this year also belongs to the Lord and we depend on his grace. The book of James chapter 4 verse 14 refreshes our minds by saying why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? 
You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Do you see the difference now between writing a new chapter in your life without a purpose and writing it with full understanding that your life belongs to God? Let me share with you some ideas of our Bible verse this morning. If I have to ask you which is the most familiar verse from the book of Isaiah, you would probably come with some good ones. However, one Isaiah's most common and well-known verse that gives us a general idea of this prophet and this book is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. And it says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Do you remember that we reflected on this verse some weeks ago, last year? This verse definitely gives us an idea of how we were, how were the people of Israel and that particular time in their history and how they were feeling like the people of God. In this text of consolation, consolation of what? Well, one more time, and I say one more time, the prophet is facing the situation of the people of Israel. The prophet is giving the tone of their inconsistency and unfaithful path as people of God. These are words that offer a warning against idolatry. These words provide a reminder that God refuses to be one God among others. The help that God provides is a powerful demonstration of God's superior supremacy and authority. Isaiah 41.4 says, Who has performed and done this? Calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, am first and will be with the last. Therefore, when we read our text today in Isaiah 43, it links with the previous chapters by opening with a promise for a people who have been anything but faithful. They were away from the Lord. They were in Babylon, far from their homeland, chastened by the Lord. Yet even in this challenging situation, God still loved them and had not abandoned them. Despite all, God promised deliverance, declaring, For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Likewise, God's faithfulness does not depend upon our fidelity. Yet God patiently calls us back to a place of faithful devotion, disciplining us as sons and daughters. So our loyalty is due to God alone. The one who presents the power can never be limited by mere human geographical boundaries. So this week's Bible text makes a strong affirmations about the attributes and character of God. And I would like to mention the three main characteristics of God today as part of God who is leading us to reveal a new chapter in our lives. First, the text says, don't look back it means forget the former things do not dwell on the past wow this is hard many times we want to live in the past so it's one thing to remember the past success and the past but another is to live in the past so God is telling the people of Israel don't look back our faith is often limited by what we have experienced in the past. 
Israel was in Babylon because of a history of failures and disobedience. Yet God says, don't look back at the past. Then the scripture says that he makes all things new. So when we come to Christ, we become a new creation and all things become new. So God can do in our life what you have never seen done before. Second, God is only getting started. Verse number 19 says, See, I am doing new things. Now it is springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So one God delivered Israel by making a path through the water. Now water will make a path in the desert. God is not predictable. God does not deliver the same way each time. The way that God heals one is not how God may heal you. And third, become a blessing to others. Verse number 20 and 21 says, The wild animals honor me, the chuckles and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and a stream in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. So when we let God refresh and recreate our lives, we are also a blessing for others. And as a consequence of that creation and renewal, we can also praise God. So where does faith meet life? Here, through this text and in our lives. Friends, not because we are starting a new calendar year means that you need to create a new beginning. This is just a calendar. What is essential is to follow some steps. So let me share with you two main ones for me. The first step is quit, quit making excuses. It is always too soon to quit. The Bible tells us to stop making excuses, admit when it's our fault, and get on with life. I have discovered that people who are good at making excuses are rarely good at anything else. They spend their energy thinking up reasons why they cannot what they are supposed to do. And step two, act of faith. New beginnings, new beginnings come to those who step out in faith. To change anything in your life by the power of God takes a leap of faith. Matthew 9, 29 tells us the story of Jesus healing two blind men. It says that Jesus touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Friends, we are beginning a new year with many questions and doubts. We are revealing a new page in our book of life. And 2020 left us a bitter taste in our mouth. This past year helped us to see life with different eyes. But amid all the negativity that we can see, we need to remember that God makes all things new. It is a time of the year in which we can, chronologically speaking, make changes. And those changes begin with a shift in our attitude, with positive thoughts, looking for opportunities in the middle of the threats, in the middle of the witnesses. So Jesus revealed to the people as a baby in a difficult season. Jesus brought not only love and joy, but also peace and hope. There is a beautiful song that says, Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O God. Make I be like you. 
May the Lord help us in this new beginning to change our heart, to have a different attitude, and to see new opportunities. Remember that Jesus says, I am making everything new. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the After being together, let us gather for this final benediction. Let us pray. God, you have invited us this first Sunday of 2021 to pray for a new beginning. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you can reveal in our hearts and in our minds what you have for us. Invite us, O Lord, to continue with faithfulness in the path of this new year. So now as we go, may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be guiding us in every single step. Amen. Following the encouragement of our bishop, we will not be meeting in person for worship until further notice. Beginning next Sunday, January 10th, Charlton Church will hold a drive-in service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. It will be held in the Jonestown Road parking lot at the side of the gym. A recording of that service will then be posted online Sunday afternoon. Any cancellation because of inclement weather will be announced by 6 p.m. on Saturday evening. You can check the church website or you'll also be notified by email or phone of any changes.